it's Lizzie here and today I'm going to show you how to make Milan and Milan is this fabulous travel case here so obviously it can stay at home <laughs> it doesn't have to travel um, but you can pop all your cleansing products in there your face creams your sort of nail gels all those sort of things that you might use um, or you can just keep it at home and put your jewellery in there your sewing things in there lots of things that you can do with Milan now the uh, the, the idea of Milan is that uh, she has a double zip here at the front so you can open it from one side to the other which is great it saves going all the way around and inside you've got a fully lined all of these edges are bias binding now a um, little pointer here if you don't want to do bias binding then just use the zigzag um, on your sewing machine uh, a slightly less width of a stitch so well keep the width the same but keep the length of the stitch smaller so you get more of the colored of the thread um, that's just my advice there so but it's quite nice to do the binding to keep everything neat and you can see how big it is really roomy you put lots of things in there and would make a great gift um, you can see that the zips go and I'll just bring it around so you can see the zips go to the front if that's what you wish and we've got a lovely um, sort of gusset here at the back a, a kind of like a hinge I suppose to keep it all in one piece so the lid doesn't come off and you can see the zips go right to one side to the other let me just open that up there we go and uh, you can see what it looks like on the back now of course you could add a pocket if you want to um, you could add a handle if you wanted to now I've used um, a, a, the, a interfacing H640 which is actually quite soft I think it's softer than your regular 8020 um, but for demonstration purposes it's great for me to use because it's adhesive um, and it doesn't move and it makes everything easy so H640 if you want a softer sort of feel uh, use 80 20 if you want it to be a little bit less soft a bit more firm a bit more rigid you could use an interfacing to make it more rigid you could use a decaville light i wouldn't use the regular decaville far too heavy to manage around those corners there so um or you could use it in the base decaville the regular you could use in the base but it's quite sturdy you can see um obviously it could squidge down if i wanted to but i, I don't want to do that i want to fill it with the lovely things so there's lots of alternatives and it's um, it's always difficult for me because I can't show you them all I can only show you what I have done and that's using uh, H640 but what we have done is quilted all the layers before we've begun to stitch so if we go on the overhead you'll be able to see let's just move um, Milan out of the way let me just show you on the overhead actually what she looks like it's an oval so you can see it's a lovely oval shape um, it's not like, like a, a squoval really <laughs> if there's such a thing um, but what we've done initially is to um, create um, all the uh, quilting now I have left left my marker lines on there because I'm going to iron those off now and the difference when you take the marker lines off is quite amazing um, it's really really um, it makes it really clean so at the beginning it looks like it's um, marked because you've got the pen still there but I'm going to switch my iron on and I'm going to take those lines away now just to save a little bit of time I have already quilted my pieces so I've quilted my base my top and oh look at that and my um, outer fabric okay so I've already quilted that the piece the hinge if you like the gusset that we've put in the back I haven't quilted I think you could if you wanted to but you must keep these pieces separate okay so with these pieces you're actually joining them together so you're going to iron on your H640 if that's what you've used um, and then you're going to spray adhesive the other side to put your lining fabric on um, and then you can draw your lines and quilt um, so I've switched my iron on I'm just going to move all my bits and bobs so we don't get too cluttered and you'll see in a moment why we keep those gusset pieces not stitched together so like magic those lines disappear and it's worth showing because when you come to do this yourself you'll see the lines 
you may not have followed the lines and, and if you looked at my stitching I probably went over the lines a little bit um, I don't mind about that because once you have ironed those um, marker lines away you've got a beautiful beautiful clean effect to your quilting you can see what that looks like now so if we do the same for the base and the top are you loving the fabric? <laughs> Uh, I think it's Macawa. I think I think from from memory it's a Macawa fabric. There we go. And this one. In fact, I kept the selvages so I could I could tell you what it was. I will a little bit later, and I'll put in the description below what the fabric is. And I know it's it, it's new fabric. So if you're watching this uh, sometime early 2022, you'll probably still be able to get the fabric. So I've ironed all my pieces, so all, all my blue lines have disappeared. So you end up with a really clean look, but it's, you've got the quilted look as well, which looks absolutely gorgeous. So you're putting your outer and your lining together with your wadding in the center and making a sandwich, then quilting. I've just done a cross hatch. You, you can do uh, whatever design you like. It may be on the top, you want to do a fancy flower and that's, that's great. Yeah, do whatever you like. I would suggest that you catch all your layers all the way around with just a, a basting stitch on your machine just so you've got a nice crisp edge you can use when you're putting your zip in. So those are the pieces for the hinge or the gusset at the back and then I've also pre-made most of my bias binding um, and I've re just wound it around a piece of fabric. I, I find this a really good tip um, is when you've made your bias binding, which is, um, it ends up being three eighths of an inch to stitch around, which is perfect for a zip. Um, if you, once it's still warm, if you wrap it around something really tight, it's a bit like when you're doing your hair with a curl. Um, if you leave that curl and cool it down, it'll stay better. Uh, same with your bias binding. If you wrap it around while it's still warm and it, you let it cool, I've just, like I say, this is just a piece of fabric here, fat quarter, um, it'll keep its shape, which is exactly what we need it to do to be helpful to us. Okay, so that's the bias binding done. The other thing we've done is put a double zip on. I've got a little sample here because I've already got mine done. This is my zip ready to go. And it's got two little cream uh, zip sliders in the center. So if we go on the overhead, I'll show you how this is done. So what I've already done is put one slider on. And I want you to have a look that I've already cut a little piece away on one side. You can see how that looks. And I've got the fat end of the zip facing into my, my zip here. So that's the fat end. I always make, I always kind of say it looks like a tadpole or, or a frog, where you've got the fat end showing here and you've got the tail there. I mean, you don't have to keep that little slider there, but it helps for demonstration purposes. So to put the other slider on, We'll just turn it around and so on the left hand side I'm leaving as it is, on the right hand side I'm cutting away a maximum quarter of an inch. You need to have enough to be out for you to be able to grab hold of your tape and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So on the left hand side it's left as is with the zip coil teeth um, facing me, the right side facing me. You can see this is the right side here. Um, and then you're going to slide your slider onto the left hand side, fat end coming down. So if I put that down so you can see, that's the shape of the zipper. So your fat end obviously with the, the larger hole at the front goes on first. So just get that on. Now that's usually any time you put a zip slider on it's usually the easiest one to put on um, and you'll get that one on and then you can't get the other one on and that's pretty normal so there we are so it's on now so I've brought it down about a quarter inch if you have a look there it's about a quarter inch down which is probably a little bit too far but I'm, I'm happy with that what you're going to do then is put these little coils here, these teeth here, just inside the, uh, the right hand side of that zip slider there. There's a little gap, you can see it, um, and those teeth are just going to go inside. Now, it might go in a millimetre, 
it might go in two millimeters whatever the case all you need to do is slide it in and if you can get the two ends lined up so if I hold it like that hopefully you can see and then I want you to grab hold of the tape on the end and then I just want you to pull and you'll see that your slider has gone on beautifully now that's not quite right you can see there's a little bend in the middle and I do that again just to make sure that all my teeth are lining up properly if we look at the sample that I've already done you can see that my teeth are lying beautifully and that is the perfect perfect um, sort of view if you like of how those two zippers should look both fat ends facing the center so when you pull them out they're absolutely perfect it's a great great way of putting a zip on and uh, I've been doing that for years and I think you just get used to, to doing it and um, it's just practice 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 so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our zip onto our main gusset piece that goes around the outside so we're going to put the zip onto this long part here this long part going around so here's my piece and we're going to do it right sides together so once again if we look on the overhead we're just going to we can pin it on or you can use um, quilters tape um, or you could use clips whatever's comfortable for you I probably put a few pins on and then I'll take them off because you know I'm not a keen fan of having loads of pins so I've got right sides facing down so the my zipper teeth are underneath here and obviously the right side of my fabric is facing up and all we're going to do is stitch along there using our zipper foot now um, we've got the, the wrong side of our zip showing if you want to you could flip this over so when you stitch you've got the right side of your zipper teeth showing um, and you're going to do that by stitching um, from the other end and I'll just show you uh, like that and that way you can see where your zipper teeth are that's up to you if you do it on this way round well, what I like to do is um, you can follow a line if you look at the back of your zip there's a clear sort of woven line on it and you might find that a good guide for you to follow with your zipper foot okay so if we move all, all our bits and pieces out of the way I'll bring my machine in there we go and we'll just put our zipper foot on now you might have a completely different zipper foot to me or you might have one that looks almost identical but I'm putting that I've got one if I show you to the camera if I show you to the camera like here you can see that I'm going to put my uh, grab if you like on this side on the left hand side of the zip um, and this is this is about three eighths of an inch so it's perfect obviously for putting in a zip um, you can decide whether you go how close you go to the zip teeth that's entirely up to you um, whatever's comfortable for you that's what I always say so I'm going to follow a line on my zip slider uh, sorry my zip tape and that way I know that my zip will be put on perfectly I'm just going to increase my stitch length a little bit there we go that's it so just follow all the way along we'll just take those pins out I much prefer to have my layers loose so just make sure you're lining up the edge of the tape with the raw edge of your the project Now if you want to, you've got your bias binding already done, you can put your bias binding on now. Uh, with all this seam allowance um, still there, we're going to trim ours back. When we get to the zipper sliders, we'll, we'll move them, so we'll get a little bit closer. So I'm just going to move them out of the way. I just need a little wriggle to get past the foot and then off we go again and because we're following the woven line on the back of the zip it makes it super easy so 
So in the pattern, you've got all the measurements that you need to create this. Okay. I always cut a little bit of extra zip just to make sure that I've got enough. There we go. So we'll just trim that away. The other end is fine. I don't need to trim that, except I just will trim my, my threads. There we go. So that's what it looks like. And when we turn our zip that way, let's bring it in so you can see. You can see how lovely and neat it is. Um, we're not going to top stitch. Just checking mine, just to make sure I'm telling you right. <laughs> we're not going to top stitch. Um, we're just going to leave it as is. If you want to top stitch, of course you can. But you've got to remember you're putting bias binding on this edge here. So you don't want to compromise that with a top stitch. Uh, that's all I'll say about that. So what I'm going to do now, and you'll see in the pictures in the pattern, is I'm going to cut some of this bulk away of the fabric. So it gives us uh, less fabric to worry about and a lot less layers to worry about. And the tape goes on a lot better when you, you cut this away. So I'll, I'll go ahead and cut that and I'll come back to you. So what I've done is I've now trimmed that away. So you, if we look on the side view, you can see what it looks like. I've trimmed it right back to give me um, less fabric to worry about when I put my bias binding on. Um, so there's two ways of doing this and I'll show you both ways now. So you can either, well, let's take our bias binding off. Obviously this is too long for this one particular side. So let's just get that ready there. Okay, so um, you can either open up the bias binding and do it on the side that you want to look the neatest, which is the zip side, because when you flip that over, that's the side you're going to see uh, on the inside of your project. So you can either open up your bias binding and stitch along the fold of your bias like this. Okay, obviously you're going to start right at the end. Or, you, because it's beautifully pressed and it knows what it wants to do, you can just literally um, encase the zip and your fabric into the bias binding, and that's what I'll do. I'm going to stitch from this side because this is the side that I'm going to see inside my um, my. Uh, Milan. So it, th I'm going to leave that for you to decide what to do. If you do it this way, where you open up the bias binding and you stitch inside that crease along there, what you're going to do is flip this bias binding over and you'll either top stitch on the machine or you'll hand stitch on this side to make it super neat. Okay? But so, uh, well, hopefully I've got pictures, well, I know I've got pictures in the pattern that will be able to help you uh, decide what's best for you because we're not always brilliant top stitchers, are we? So I've left my zipper foot on and I'm, all I'm going to do is encase my seam um, in my bias binding. So I'm just going to stitch the whole lot in one go. I'm going to make sure that my bias binding goes over my original stitching. That way it'll show neatly on the back. You can hardly see it's camouflaged and on the front on where the, the zip is. And I'm stitching on the zip side as I said before. So we're going to start right at the end. Just make sure I catch that properly. Once it's caught and you've got your needle in there, that's your anchor. You can then line everything up and just um, encase your piece in the binding. Um, and if you wanted to, you could hand stitch back and front. If it's something that really um, makes you anxious, then then hand stitch the whole thing. Why not? It's whatever makes you feel comfortable. So we're coming up to the zip sliders. So once again, I'm just going to move those out of the way. Now, um, to be honest, you don't need necessarily bias binding on this part here. I've only, it's just, I've managed to make enough binding to go around my, my top pieces as well as the, the gusset. So I'm just moving my zip sliders out of the way. 
So this could be just your regular straight binding. But keep it the same width, which it ends up three eighths of an inch once folded. You start off with a piece of fabric one and a half inches wide. So it just takes a little while to go all the way down. And each time you're stopping and starting, you're readjusting. Obviously, you could use your quilter's tape, use your pins, use anything that's going to make it easier for you uh, to stitch. And then it takes away some of the fear. And if you want to use your regular foot, it'd probably be fine to do that. And just to keep adjusting and encasing all your layers. So I'm just going to snip that now, put that to one side ready for the next stage. So right to the very end, just make sure everything is encased. There we are. So let me show you. So this is obviously the front of the zip there. This is the seam that we just stitched. And this is our bias binding. If I can get it to show you, bear with. This is our bias binding caught both sides. Okay, so that means when I flip this zip over, just move the machine so I can show you. Look at that, it's absolutely beautiful on the front, but it's also equally as beautiful on the inside. And when you press it, you're going to press that seam so your bias binding lays that way. And that's why I said, if you stitch on the back of the zip, that's what you're going to see. So that's the, what's most important that's kept neat. Okay. And that's going to be neat all the way along. But that's what we do. We, we end up pressing it in, but we can do that later. So now we've got our um, main sort of body gusset attached. Now what we're going to do is attach the little back gusset. So... This is quite an interesting process. I'm going to move my machine out of the way. So obviously what you want to do is right sides together with your, um, let's do it so that it's the right side for you. So you want to open up your zip so it's flat like that. Okay, so it's nice and flat. So make sure that you've got the right side of the fabric, the right side of the zip showing. Make sure that on the back, we flip that over, that your bias binding is laying flat. So you may well have wanted to have pressed that all the way along to make sure it's flat. Okay, I mean, if you, if you haven't got time to do that, then um, perhaps use some quilter's tape just to hold it down or maybe a pin every, every now and again just to hold it down because you want your bias binding and your zip and your back of your fabric to look like that. Okay, so if I flip that over again, that's how it looks. And by all means, take this to the iron and now give it a good press. So with our other piece of fabric, we've got two pieces, obviously. We've got the lining piece, we've got the outer piece. Um, and look, look at that, it nearly matches. <laughs> Just um, flip that right sides together and make sure that your um, edges are aligned up. Take it all the way up to the top. There we go. Smash him. And then you're going to put right sides together to the back. So once again, and obviously, you know, if you want to trim all this so it's really super square, then please do that. Um, and line this up. And just move your pin to catch that. And obviously at the top there and I'll just pin it through like that okay 
you know I'm not going to keep that pin there but it's just so you can see so this is my my outer gusset this is my lining gusset you can see what it looks like that bias is laying flat and I'm just going to stitch that seam down my my uh, Milan when you get a new name for something it's very difficult to remember it and then you remember it for ages and then you forget it again so if somebody says to you oh what was that bag you made someone says no idea no idea <laughs> Right, so we're going to stitch those layers together using a quarter inch seam allowance and you know I'm going to take my pins out but you don't if that's what you like to do in fact I'm going to start stitching from the bottom I'm going to get that all lined up and stitch from the bottom so a regular stitch length and um, do a back stitch just to make sure you've got it attached that's it and then all the way up the top don't forget to check to make sure that that binding is laying flat because it will want to move. It doesn't naturally like to sit like that. I might just move that over a little bit. Hi, I'm sorry to interrupt your sewing, but I just needed to tell you about my gold club. If you go to my website, lizzycurtis.com, you will see a page that says sign up gold. And that's where you can first of all try the 14 day free trial period, or you can just sign up straight away and cut, cut to the quick. You get two full concise patterns every month with two full videos. You also get a mid month madness pattern that I'll Catherine makes for us plus a video to accompany that as well. You also get all the Making It Monday projects for that current month as well for your membership. We have TV celebrity guests every month talking to us about their sewing journeys or just what they get up to in their crafting lives and it's people that you know that are on your TV screens. We also do personal challenges every month as well. For 2022 we're doing a 12 month journey page all stitching and then we're raising money for children in need also with a bear project every month not a pudsy bear a different sort of bear so if you join the gold club you really won't regret it you do need to join the facebook page to get full advantage of being a gold member listen i have just finished a facebook live with my lovely ladies in the group on facebook and we have just made this fabulous scrappy patchy scarf and those are the sort of things that we do just on an ad hoc basis it's a great place to be come on sign up and join us <laughs> And again, just back stitch and cut. Just check to make sure you've got all the layers. Make sure they're all they've all been caught. Yeah, fairly happy with that. <laughs> so there we are. So there is our piece attached. You can see it perhaps on the front. So this is the piece we've attached. You can see where the zip stops. If we look at the back, if I hold it up. You can see what that looks like in the back as well. Okay. okay, so now we're going to do something a little quirky to get the other ends meeting up because we want the other end of the, the, the gusset, if you like, the front piece to meet the gusset at the back. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring your lining pieces together. So if we look on the overhead, we've got our lining piece of our um, gusset here that's our, our gusset at the back and this is our main body piece here you see it's quilted so you're going to bring those together like that okay and you're going to just temporarily pin that so just make sure that bottom edge is okay and obviously with the top edge what you're going to do is make sure that your um, bias is still laying flat as it did was the other side and then you're going to pin that one as well so let's just get that um, lined up there we go and I'm going to pop a pin in so just bear with while I move that around okay so that holds everything in place like that so that's our gusset of our little um, I mean, it's difficult to explain so it's our lining pieces that are matching up on the back and that would be our seam that we're going to do in just a little while 
and then what we're going to do is we need to join this seam here around the other side okay so what we're going to do is roll this up as tight as we can like that and then this side seam here this raw edge here is going to come all the way around and meet the other edge now I'll do that again in case you you kind of think what on earth is she talking about so then my raw edges are meeting you end up with a little a little bundle of joy there okay so we'll do that again just to make sure you're with it so what I've got is I've got my long piece here as you can see <clears throat> that's the end where I've joined the the back gusset the back hinge if you like so all I'm going to do is take the lining piece as you know that's loose we didn't quilt that and I'm going to attach it to the lining of my main body piece okay I'm just going to pop a pin in there just to hold it and you can stitch this if you want just to make it um, really firm so just mind your zip and I've deliberately put my pin heads on the um, on the outside so I can easily move them and you see okay so now this is the the other half this is your front piece that you haven't quilted it's your your piece of gusset here the back panel okay and we need to come all the way around we need this edge to, to meet this edge here okay so that's what it will look like okay so what we're going to do is we're going to roll this up like that as tight as you can <laughs> and then this comes all the way around to your edge and it makes a little tube so I'm going to take my pin out and repin it and then again take my pin out and repin it and the the edge that has the zip will be a lot fatter obviously because you've got the zip in there but you will still be able to get your machine under there quite easily and stitch a quarter inch seam allowance okay so just but make sure everything is lined up and make sure your zipper your bias binding that you put on your zipper is still lying flat so there's lots lots of things to remember and keep having a little check and just to make sure everything is sitting straight so now what we're going to do is stitch all the way down here and that will give us a nice neat join okay so i know it's a little bit complicated but um and very difficult to explain <laughs> so i'm gonna take my pin out and again to catch that first sort of quarter inch I'm going to do a back stitch and come forward again and before I go anywhere near my um, my zip or my, my, the bias on my zip I'm just checking to make sure it's sitting flat which it is because that's the main thing I want that that zipper bias binding to be facing down like I had it on the other end so come all the way down to make sure that's caught under my little screw there that's it and obviously pin or clip this to make sure that everything is lined up and it, it easily goes you can see it easily goes under the foot it's just that little bit of awkwardness of rolling the, the zip part up the main body part up to get it in so you have this tube and then all you're going to do is just pull this out and hopefully you haven't stitched anything you have shouldn't have stitched we'll see <laughs> so you're just pulling it out and kind of turning it all back on itself there we go so what you've got now is a nice oval to attach to your base and your your lid basically and that that's that's it I mean it's it's uh, it's done apart from obviously attaching the tops and bottom <laughs> so at this stage I would probably go away and give this a nice press so it's really nice and neat because at the moment it looks like it could do with a good press there we are that's how it looks 
So um, once we've done that, what we need to do is attach the, the top part. So this part here, we've got to attach that. Now, um, if you wanted to, you could have your bias binding on the outside of your case. You can have it on the outside. Um, I particularly didn't want that, but you might want to, in which case you really start to need start to think about how you're going to put this together because you want the bias, I want the bias binding inside. Okay. So what we're going to do is put our right sides together. There we go. So our right sides of our outer fabric are kind of together although we've got the zip obviously you need to find the center back and this and the sides of this piece so you can get it all lined up so all you're going to do is fold this and do a little snip at both sides so a snip here and a snip here fold it lengthwise and do a little snip because those are your marker points. So you can line everything up. So here's our, here's our oval. So again, I'm just going to line up my seams on my, my back panel there. I'm gonna have a little clip. Now obviously you can't clip your bias, so you can click clip into the zip. So let, let's get that to stand up. If you've pressed this, you'll, you'll, it'll be fine. You'll have it, it should be standing up. And then just put a little clip in there. It's like a, just a V. Pull it out sideways and match up your back and front Vs, your notches. Put a little nick in here and in here. So you've done north, south, east, west. <laughs> And you cut little notches and now you can line this up beautifully. So because I want the seam to be on the inside of my case and my binding on the inside of my case, I'm doing um, right sides together. So all we need to do now is to line this up. So part of this is going to be um, with no zip at all and part of it is going to be obviously with a zip. So just start matching your notches up. That's the best thing to do first. Match your notches up with the zip. Now again, if you wanted to, you could put your bias tape on straight away. You don't have to stitch this first and then put your bias tape on, but quite honestly, I think that's the best thing to do. So you're matching up your north, south, east, west notches. There we go, like that. So we've got, that's how it looks. So we've got our lining, so the raw edges, if you like, face outwards on the lining, and that's what we're going to bind, and that is the correct way of doing things. And then what you can do is work your way around and fit your, your, your the main sort of body piece and um, the gusset if you like into that top piece make sure that it all fits beautifully and, and because it's curved you may need to cut into your zip to make sure your zip sits nicely um, but I would find almost the mid point and make sure they fit okay put another pin in use quilters tape um, if you're really brave, like I said, you could stitch this with your bias binding on straight away. But I, I won't do that. I'll do this one bit but at a time. So the first thing we're going to do, if we look on the overhead, we're going to stitch. Um, we will, we'll start on the part that doesn't have any binding. Um, so we'll start here. Well, the piece that doesn't have a zip either. Um, so we'll start in the middle here and then we'll work our way around. I'm going to stitch once again with the um, zipper tape as my guide and that way I know it's going to be really super neat. And then I'm going to ease my zipper tape onto my curve of my lid. Okay, now just make sure that you've got your owls or whatever it is you've got facing the right way. So when you have a look at it, um, it is facing the right way. Let's make sure I'm doing it the right way. <laughs> so if you're not sure, you can always um, push it out and just sit, make sure that the owls or whatever, if it's got directional fabric, that it's going the right way. 
okay so now I'm just going to stitch around the the whole of the top piece working that um, main sort of body of the bag into the upper piece making sure it sits nicely making sure it all um, works its way in and um, you could like I said you could cut the zipper tape so it goes around those corners a little bit easier so what we're doing is uh, treating it like regular fabric and you would snip around that so I'm just going to see how I go um, I've got my um, zipper foot on and like I said I'm going to stitch where this I can see the back of my zip um, I, I find that better because then I've got a guide on my zip uh, where I said if you look at the back of the zip you can see different woven lines that's such a good guide so we'll start off keeping all our layers lovely and straight Um, you might want to remove your your um, the table of your machine so you've got a free arm facility but um, I've got mine in such a way that I'm not using that facility so let's just work our way around let's just move that a little closer to myself just so all you've got to do is make sure that your tape and the outside um, raw edges of your your case sit nicely on top of each other and like I said um, snipping into that zip will really help you do that let's just and also um, as I said before if you press 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 all of these um, stages it certainly will make it easier so I'm just going to snip into my zip a little bit so no um, no wider than a quarter inch and also the spacing out about a quarter inch as well. So you're not going in very far into the zip. So take your pins out as you need to and just keep moving all of your pieces around. So we'll just snip into this corner piece again just to make sure it sits nicely. So you're snipping about a quarter inch apart and a quarter inch in and you're just going to literally work your way around and then the next stage is to put the bias on just like we did before um, there's nothing difficult about this at all so if you're a new stitcher all you need to worry about is making sure that you have a zipper foot because obviously it's, it's difficult without take your time use quilters tape because it's such a great help when you come to the zip sliders all we're going to do is move those out of the way again so you're just wriggling past your zipper foot now you might find opening up the zip better for you I've got mine still closed I may well open it up in a minute you'll, you'll find your own way of being comfortable with all of this so we're just coming to the third curved corner now so I'm just going to snip my zipper tape I suppose I'm zipping up zipping I'm just snipping about three inches just matched my notch up that the notches are such a great idea it, it'll keep everything um, sort of that that's your sort of goal that's what you're aiming for so just make sure that that the, the quarter that you're doing between each notch is fitting perfectly to your um, outer pieces 
So we're just coming round to this last curve now. And as they say, we're on the home run. I mean, you could try using your regular foot, but um, a zipper foot is handy, especially if you've got a wide bottom zipper foot, it does grab. So if we turn this right side out, what we've done is we've, we've attached our lid. There we are, so it doesn't have a bottom <laughs> yet. <laughs> so there's the, the lid, can you see? And our um, zip sliders are way around here around here like that okay so all we need to do now is to put the bias tape on now you've already seen me do that so I'll do that away from the camera um, we've also got to put the base on exactly the same technique except make sure that you open up your zip and you might want to open it up to put the bias tape on anyway um, so what you've got now is there's the lid and so as you can see, it's quite easy. You've got that really clear run all the way around of putting the bias on. Um, I would always suggest that you trim back your quilted fabric just to make sure that you get rid of some of that bulk. Just snipping my zip so it lays straight. Um, and then you're just going to put your bias all the way around that from here all the way around so it's really nice and neat. Excuse me. Um, and then you're just going to repeat for the for the bottom. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll come back to you. So I've stitched the bias binding all the way around the top part of my case. And I want you just to have a quick look at how I finish that off because, because we're not um, encasing the ends like we did before into a seam. So I just want you to have a little look on the overhead here. As I came back along, and finished off my bias binding, all I did was I folded the end over by, well, a good three eighths of an inch um, and then just kept on stitching along just to attach it. So you can see it makes a nice, neat finish. And then all of this is going to be pressed down and look beautiful as we, as we finish our case. So you can see that that's now, let's just move the zip back. If you remember, we left it looking uh, with the raw edges and now we've got the bias binding going all the way around the, the top part of the case. So when we close it, we've got a lovely, neat finish. But of course, the next thing we need to do is the base. <clears throat> so all of this top part now is completed, just needs a press basically, but that's all done. So we're going to do exactly what we did before. Now this time I want you to keep the zip open because we need to obviously turn it through once we've finished. It could be quite tricky if we didn't do that. Um, so again, we're putting right sides together. So you might want to think about how your owls are going to look on the outside. Just want to make sure if they want to go a certain way. If you're using, I know you're not using owls, but you could be using a directional fabric. So I'll leave it like that. So um, you're going to fold this in half again and just cut a little notch either side. Don't make it any more than quarter inch into your work. And then I want you to fold it again so it's lengthways. So your centre notches there match up. Cut another little notch. This time we're not using, we're not stitching near a zip, so it makes it so much easier. So now we've got a notch north, south, east, west. We want to do the same with the, the base. So where our back gusset is, our back panel, just bring those seams together so they're matching, because you know that's now in the middle, and just cut a notch. Just bring that out so it's like that. Cut a notch. <coughs> And then you're bringing your two notches together. Pin it if you're not sure. So your notches are now sitting together in the middle. 
and cut a notch this end and this end and make sure you can see them make sure that when you um you're stitching you they're big enough to see so i say cut them small but you want them big enough to see but no no bigger than a quarter inch otherwise you know you might see them in the seam okay so now what we're going to do is attach our base so like i said before just make sure that if your um, fabric is directional just make sure that you've got your um whatever it is facing the way you want it to be. I don't suppose it really matters with the owls, but hey ho. So this time again, we're going to stitch with the, uh, so we've got the raw edges on the lining. So the outside is super duper neat. And then we're just going to match up our owls, our notches. I don't know why I said owls. <laughs> so I think, I think I'm okay with that. So again, it's right sides, of your fabric together and that's the right sides of your outer fabric are together so all you're looking at is your lining so you're looking for your notches line them up this and this part as i said is much much easier than putting the top in to the zip part of your your bag your, your case so line up the side notches so you've got north, south, east, west. And then if you wanted to go for halfway between those quarter points. And that way we've got that pinned and keep on pinning until you're absolutely comfortable with how that looks. So that's your base pinned on. Okay, I'm just gonna go for it, um, but you might want to keep it neat. So. Once again, we'll stitch this round. Um, to be honest, it doesn't really matter whether you stitch on the base or whether you stitch on the, the main bag piece. Do whatever's comfortable for you. Again, the seam allowance is a quarter inch. You might want to use your free arm facility. Just make sure your raw edges stay together. You want to make sure that they stay together and do pin if you think that it's that uh, you need to kind of wriggle it a bit and don't forget once again we're putting a straight edge onto a curve um, i wouldn't bother snipping in you might want to but just manipulate it so that straight edge fits nicely onto a curve Um, and I find it much easier to stitch a straight edge onto a curve rather on so the straight edge is on the top and the curve is underneath. You might uh, do do differently, but that's how I I've always done it. And I find that the easiest because I can manipulate this top part so it fits. And it sits nicely. And I just absolutely adore the colours on this. Absolutely adore. So we're stitching a quarter of an inch. If you want to go an eighth of an inch, if that's easier for you, please do. Just make sure that your notches stay matched up. That way you've only got a quarter of that piece to make sure it fits nicely. If you find um, pins uncomfortable, then use clips or just baste with your machine. Just baste those four points. It, it, all of that preparation work makes a difference. <coughs> so coming around to near where we started. I think that the key to all of this is to make sure your raw edges always sit on top of each other nice and neatly and that way everything fits if you let the um if you let the raw edges move then it won't fit right there we go 
So I've just gone over my original stitches where I started, just instead of a back tack. So there is our base attached, you can see. Obviously it's raw edges, of course. So we will trim that back and then we'll put bias binding on that. In the meantime, let's just turn it through. And do give this a really good press. So I think you'll understand by now, if you've been following me all the way along, that this is an easy project. It's the zip part that, if anything, is going to, um, you know, sort of take, you'll have to take your time with. Do make sure that you press that bias binding so it sits where it's supposed to sit. And that means it's, it's going away from the zip teeth. And there we have it. Just get those zippers in the front for you. I think that looks amazing in that fabric. Obviously it needs a bit of a press, but I think it's cracking. So this is um, Milan. This is our very, very posh travel case. Could be for your makeup, could be for your jewellery. You might want to add a handle. I'll do that afterwards. Um, just make your handle, maybe a one inch strap, maybe about 14, 15 inches long. Attach it to the sides, uh, if that's what you want. I, I like it just as it is. Uh, but you may want to make adjustments. You could put a pocket in here as well, on the outside and the inside. So yeah, so this is Milan. Milan has that back panel, that back gusset there. The main gusset all going all the way around and top and bottom ovals. It's actually quite a nice little make. And when we look at the one that's uh, suitably pressed, you can see it takes on a different uh, look because everything is, is all lovely and neat and tidy. And you can see how our binding goes. It goes away from the zip teeth. And you need, because it's bias, it'll work. It'll absolutely work. Um, it, it doesn't mind being stretched and pushed around. So get your steam iron on it and push that bias into the bag and then it will sit beautifully away from your zip teeth. Yeah, so there we are. So this is Milan. This is one of the patterns for March 2022. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you make loads.